Okay, we're going to start talking about muscle physiology, but to do that, we need to talk about some nomenclature specific to muscles, muscle cells, and outline some structures within the muscle cells. So without further ado, here we are with a muscle cell. A muscle cell and a muscle fiber are the same thing. They are synonymous with each other. So I will continually use those terms interchangeably, muscle fiber and muscle cell. So in red here is a muscle fiber, muscle cell. And full disclosure, this lecture and the next few lectures on muscle physiology are going to be focusing on the physiology of skeletal muscle. We'll have further videos on cardiac muscle and then on smooth muscle. So there's three types of muscle in the body, skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, which is the muscle of the heart, and smooth muscle. Smooth muscle lines hollow organs, blood vessels, and the like. Okay, so back to this picture right here. In red here is the plasma membrane of the cell also known as the cell membrane. But with muscles, there's a tertiary term, and that is sarcolemma. Sarcolemma, plasma, mem sarcolemma, plasma membrane, and cell membrane all mean the exact same thing. It is just the phospholipid bilayer of skeletal muscle cells. Dipping the sarcolemma dips into the interior of the cell, and this structure right here is known as the T-tubule. So the dipping of the sarcolemma towards the interior of the cytoplasm, if you will, is known as the T-tubule. For clarity, this space right here and right here and right here is the extracellular fluid. Right here, in dipping into the T-tubule, this is also the extracellular fluid. My point is this is outside of the cell. Right here, we are inside the cell, otherwise known as the intracellular fluid. Extracellular fluid, extracellular fluid, extracellular fluid. And I'll talk about the functional significance of the T-tubule in a later video. The cytoplasm of a muscle cell is known as the sarcoplasm. Cytoplasm and sarcoplasm are the exact same thing. Cytoplasm and sarcoplasm are the space bound by the cell membrane, within the cell membrane. Right here in blue is an organelle that we've referenced in earlier videos known as the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum in muscle fibers stores calcium, and we call it the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The sarcoplasmic reticulum stores calcium there's a high concentration of calcium in the sarcoplasmic reticulum and a much lower concentration of calcium in the sarcoplasm or within the interior of the cell. Just to be clear, high concentration of calcium outside the cell, low concentration of calcium inside the cell, with the one exception that confined to this organelle, the sarcoplasmic reticulum, there's a high concentration of calcium. And just a trailer to what's going to come later. The whole goal of excitation of the muscle fiber is to release the calcium from the sarcoplasm and allow it to disperse throughout the muscle cell, but we'll talk about that later. Okay, what else do we have here? Certainly we have a charge, and I should have a positive charge on the exterior of the cell. There's a voltage or difference in charge between the inside and outside of the cell, and let's just say that's negative 70 millivolts. That's no different than other excitable cells like neurons. Keep in mind, neurons and muscle fibers are both excitable cells that are able of undergoing depolarization events. Right here in orange is the DHP receptor. It is a protein embedded within the T-tubule that actually is physically connected to the sarcoplasmic reticulum, and I'll show that in a later video. But there's actually a link between the DHP receptor, and this gate right here. The gate of the sarcoplasmic reticulum is known as the ryanidine channel. So in orange here, we have a DHP receptor. The gate of the sarcoplasmic reticulum is the ryanidine channel. Over here to the left, we have the contractile proteins. 
these are the proteins that are actually going to allow the muscle fiber to shorten or to contract. To be clear, muscle fibers do not always shorten when they contract, but many of them do. Incorporated within the making up these contractile filaments, in purple here, we have see the myosin molecule, which makes up the thin filament. In green, we see a double-stranded thin filament made up of G-actin molecules. So the thin filament in green is actin, the thick filament in purple is myosin. Blocking the binding or inhibiting the binding of the thick filament to the thin filament, at least in this orientation or depiction, is a muscle, is a protein molecule known as tropomyosin. And we'll talk about these facets of the myofilaments in detail in a subsequent video. But in short, tropomyosin inhibits the binding of the thick filament to the thin filament in the absence of calcium. Right here is another protein known as troponin. Troponin is the binding site for calcium. Troponin is the binding site for calcium. Troponin and tropomyosin are regulatory proteins. So they are going to dictate whether or not the thick filament can bind to the thin filament. If the thick filament binds to the thin filament, we're going to get shortening of the muscle fiber, hence muscle contraction. So once again, Troponin is the binding site for calcium, which, by the way, is going to come from the sarcoplasmic reticulum if and when this gate, the ryanidine channel, opens. So we'll talk about all of that in detail. Once again, quick review, sarcolemma, sarcoplasm, sarcoplasmic reticulum, ryanidine channel, DHP receptor, T-tubule, thin filament, thick filament, tropomyosin, troponin, and we'll talk next video.